Before fitting the Perju Performance Turbo Kit, we did a power run on the dyno to get a baseline power figure. The car made 137 brake horsepower and 285 Nm of torque. We will be fitting the turbo kit today and also changing the engine oil and filter. All of these parts are available from Perju Performance. The first step is to get the front of the car up in the air. This will make removing the front bumper far easier. Remove the bolts that are holding the bumper on. There are some on the top, some on the bottom and some in the wheel arches. Disconnect the battery from the car. Make sure the doors are unlocked and the boot is open in case you need any access when there's no power. Next we will remove the front bar and crash support. This will allow you to move the front assembly out of the way. Unbolt the headlights and disconnect the electrical connectors and unbolt the front support panel. Disconnect the top radiator hose. Make sure you have something ready to drain the coolant into. Pull the front assembly forward from the passenger side and support it with a jack or axle stand. Remove the heat shield from the turbo and exhaust downpipe. It's a good idea to soak these bolts in penetrating fluid before attempting to remove. Disconnect the lambda sensor, electrical connector and remove it from the downpipe. Remove the bolts from the downpipe. There are four that connect it to the turbo and two that connect it to the rest of the exhaust. You will then be able to remove the downpipe. Remove the intake pipe from the turbo, disconnect the lines from the turbo and the actuator. Remove the oil feed and drain lines from the turbo. We'll be reusing these. The coolant lines on the front and back can also be removed. These are not going to be used with the new turbo. Remove the bolts holding the manifold to the engine. You will then be able to remove the turbo and manifold as one unit. We now need to separate the turbo from the manifold. We will be reusing the manifold. Locate all of the pieces you are going to need and work out the orientation of the adapter plate and gaskets. Bolt the adapter plate to the manifold. Don't forget the gasket. Bolt the Perju Performance Turbo to the manifold. Again, don't forget the gasket. Remove the coolant drain line and fit the supplied block off plug. Fit the turbo and manifold as one unit back to the engine, reversing the steps we took to remove it. The rear heat shield is also the gasket, so make sure this is in place. Fit the oil return line. This now requires an adapter block supplied with the kit. Make sure you also use the supplied gaskets to avoid any leaks. Fit the oil feed line. This also requires the use of a new adapter included in the kit. Here we use copper washers to seal rather than gaskets. Be careful not to over tighten the banjo bolt. We now need to fit the uprated boost sensors. The first one is located on the boost pipe that goes to the throttle body. Removing the battery and moving the tray to one side will make this a lot easier. Remove the electrical connector and unbolt the sensor. Replace with the uprated one refit and attach the connector. The other boost sensor is located on the left hand side of the inlet manifold. Removing the oil filler neck will make this a lot easier to get to. Remove the single bolt holding the retaining bracket and then unscrew the filler neck. Be careful not to drop anything into the engine while it's exposed. Remove the bolt holding in the sensor and remove the electrical connector. 
reverse the process to fit the upright sensor and refit the oil filler neck. The next step is to fit the new injectors. Remove the cover and unbolt the fuel rail. The injectors are a tight fit in the inlet manifold, so you may need some leverage to remove the rail. Remove the retaining clips and pull the injectors. There is still fuel pressure in the rail, so here you will see some fuel leaking. To avoid this, before removing the battery, let the engine run and pull the fuel pump fuse. This will cause the engine to cut out and there will be no fuel pressure in the rail. Fit the new injectors by reversing the process. Remember to fit the retaining clips. Push the fuel rail back into the inlet manifold and bolt it back into position. We now need to refit the lambda sensor into the new downpipe. Check that the other bung plugs are tight to avoid any exhaust leaks. We now need to fit the new downpipe to the turbo, remembering the gaskets. This process is the same whether you have the sports cat option or not. There are four bolts to the turbo and two where it joins the exhaust. Screw them in loosely at first to allow you to align the pipe correctly. Refit the lines to the turbo and actuator. Reinstall the turbo intake pipe. Refit the front panel and support bars, remembering to connect the boost pipe from the turbo and the upper coolant line to the radiator. You'll now need to refill the cooling system. Refit the headlights and bumper. This is the reverse order of how we remove them. You can now fit your optional Funk Motorsport turbo blanket. After having the car tuned, we return back to the dyno for another power run. The car now makes 252 brake horsepower and 355 newton meters of torque. 